Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at um, this homework assignment. So this homework assignment is all about integration. So the there's some antiderivative formulas. Antiderivative of 1 is just x. Antiderivative of just a number is a times x. Um, power rule for antiderivatives, add 1 to the exponent, multiply by the reciprocal, or divide by the exponent. And then you have your antiderivative of sine, cosine, secant squared, Cosecant squared, secant tangent, cosecant cotangent, 1 over x, e to the x, a to the x, and then all of your inverse um, trig functions, okay? And you have more. Um, so let's go ahead and just start taking a look at some antiderivatives, okay? Antiderivative of x to the fifth, add 1 to the exponent, multiply by the reciprocal, so 1 sixth x to the sixth minus 6 times 1 third x cubed plus 1 half x squared and minus x and then plus c. And so then you get 1 6 x to the 6 minus 2 x cubed plus 1 half x squared minus x and plus c. And then don't forget your plus c. Okay. Anytime you have roots or things in the denominator, um, I would change these to fractional exponents and negative exponents. There's only basic derivatives, antiderivatives using like power rule or some sort of formula, or U substitution on your guys' AP test. So uh, it's BC curriculum to do partial fraction decomposition and um, integration by parts. So a few less things that you have to worry about. Okay, so add 1 to your exponent, so that gives me x to the 3 halves, so that's 2 thirds in the front. And then x to the negative second power, which is minus, minus uh, 1 half, and then that's a plus c. Okay? So um, you can do, um, remember, separation of variables. So my dy dx, I'm going to have dy on one side and my 3x squared plus 2, sorry, dy on the left side and then 3x squared plus 2 times dx on the right side. And you take the antiderivative of both sides, so you get y, and you get 3 times 1 third x cubed plus 2x, and then plus c. Okay, so I'm going to actually evaluate that, um, plus c. So let's clean up the y value first. So y is equal to x cubed plus 2x plus c. So the negative 1 is equal to 0 cubed plus 2 times 0 plus c. So c is equal to negative 1. So y is equal to x cubed plus 2x minus 1. Okay. And then I'm going to again change this to a negative exponent and I'm also going to get rid of that cube root so that gives it to the four-thirds power so then I get x and then minus it'll be x to the negative one-third so that puts a positive three in the front and then a plus c and then um, no quotient rule because I remember no partial fraction decomposition. So um, I'm going to divide everybody by x squared. So 3x squared over x squared plus x over x squared minus 1 over x squared dx. So this is the antiderivative of 3 plus 1 over x minus x to the negative second power and dx. I did not change my 1 over x because that's actually ln. So this is 3x plus ln, absolute value of x, and then minus x to the negative first power, so that actually turns that into a plus 1 and then a plus c. And you don't have to write the 1 in front of that um, x. Example 6, distribute, so I would have changed this into x to the 1 half power, so I have x squared minus 3, and that's dx, so then distribute, so then that gives me um, 
rules of exponents tell me that this is x to the 2 and a half, which is 5 halves, and then minus 3x to the 1 half, and then dx. Because rules of exponents, when they're multiplying together, they're actually adding the, the exponents. So then I get 7 halves, so 2 sevenths, x to the 7 halves, minus 3, x to the 3 halves, so this is times 2 thirds, and then plus c. So then 2 sevenths, x to the 7 halves, minus 2x to the 3 halves, and then plus c. Um, antiderivative x cubed is 1 fourth x to the fourth, minus the antiderivative of sine, which is negative cosine, and then plus c. So 1 fourth x to the fourth plus 4 cosine of x and plus c. Antiderivative of cosine is positive sine, so this is 4 sine of x. Antiderivative of cotangent, um, so I'm going to put minus antiderivative of cotangent of x, dx. That's actually um, u substitution. So 4 sine of x minus change cotangent into cosine over sine. So let u be equal to sine, du is equal to cosine, so dx is equal to du over cosine. So you get 4 sine of x minus the antiderivative cosine of x over u times du over cosine of x. So then this is 4 sine of x minus the antiderivative of 1 over u du which is ln, so 4 sine x minus ln, absolute value of u, and then plus c. Resubstitute your u back in, so 4 sine of x minus the ln, absolute value of sine of x, and then plus c. Okay? With the trig functions, you always let your u be equal to the denominator of the, um, the function. Okay, so example 9... Rules of exponents tell me that this is e to the 2x minus x dx, which is the antiderivative of e to the x dx, which is e to the x plus c. Okay. This one looks like um, arctangent. Remember, I, any coefficients or any numbers that are, in, that are in the numerator, I can always factor them out. So now this is 3 arctangent of x and plus c. So example 11 looks like um, arc sine, um, but instead the issue that we'll have is that instead of it being 1, it's equal to 9. So anytime you have just 1 or some sort of number in the numerator, so no variables at all, if you had variables then it would be u sub. No variables, then you have inverse trig. So our issue is with this 9 that's here. It needs to be 1. So what we do is we factor it out. 1 over square root 9 minus 1 over x squared over 9 dx. And then I can break apart my root, so this is root 9, root 1 minus x squared over 9 dx. Instead of x squared over 9, I can rewrite this. So this is 1 over, square root of 9 is 3, so root 1 minus x over 3, the quantity squared, dx. Now this looks like arc sine, but I let u be equal to x over 3, so then du is equal to 1 third dx, so dx is equal to 3 du. So I get the antiderivative 1 over 3 square root 1 minus u squared and then 3 du. Your 3's cancel out. You're left with the antiderivative 1 over 1 root 1 minus u squared du which is arc sine, so arc sine of u plus c. Your u is equal to 
x over 3, so this is arc sine x over 3 and plus c. Okay? This guy has a special formula that was um, from way above. This is um, this antiderivative is equal to 7 to the x times the ln of 7 plus c. And it comes from the derivative of a to the x power. You remember the derivative of a to the x is a to the x ln of a. And remember, a antiderivative just undoes your function. So that's why it's dividing by your um, land of 7. Okay, so now we got to do some u substitution problems. Yay, u substitution. So in order to do um, your u substitution, you're looking for letting u um, being equal to the um, inside function. Um, so then that way you can use some sort of uh, power rule. So in this case, I'd let u be equal to x plus 1. So du is equal to dx. And then this one actually requires a little bit more effort. Um, so, and which, because what you'll notice is that I have x and then u to the 10th power du. And I still have that x there, and so I need to get rid of it. Whenever you have that situation where when you do your u substitution, the x's don't all cancel out, you must isolate x, so u minus 1. So then you get um, antiderivative u minus 1 times u to the 10th power du, which you can then distribute. So this is u to the 11th power minus u to the 10th power, and I'm taking the antiderivative du. So this is 1 12th u to the 12th minus 1 11th u to the 11th, and then plus c. So 1 12th, and then my u is equal to x plus 1 to the 12th minus 1 over 11, x plus 1 to the 11th, and then plus c. Okay. Next one lets u be equal to the inside function, so x minus 2, so du is equal to dx. So then what you get is x root u du. And again, you still have that same problem with that x there, so you take your u and you isolate x, so u plus 2. And then you substitute it in. u plus 2, root u is u to the 1 half power and du. So then you distribute u to the 3 halves plus 2u to the 1 half and du. So this is 2 fifths u to the 5 halves plus 2 times 2 thirds u to the 3 halves and then plus c. So 2 fifths, my u is x minus 2 to the 5 halves plus 4 thirds, not u x minus 2 to the 3 halves, and then plus c. Okay? Example 15, u is equal to 2x minus 5, so du is equal to 2 dx, so dx is du over 2. So now, antiderivative u to the 2 thirds, du over 2, so I have antiderivative 1 half u to the 2 thirds du, so then I add 1 to the exponent, so 1 half, this will be um, 5 thirds, so this is 3 fifths. And then plus c, so then I get 3 tenths, my u is 2x minus 5 to the 5 thirds, and then plus c. Okay. Again, u is equal to x cubed minus 8, so du is equal to 3x squared dx, so dx is equal to du over 3x squared, so I get the antiderivative of x squared u to the fifth times du over 3x squared, and your, three, and your x squareds cancel out, so you're left with one-third u to the negative fifth power du, so one-third 
u to the negative fourth, so that's negative 1 over 4, and then plus c, so this is negative 1 twelfth u, which is x cubed minus 8 to the negative fourth power, and then plus c. Okay, 17 u is equal to 4x, du is equal to 4dx, so du, dx is equal to du over 4. So the antiderivative is sine of u du over 4. Antiderivative of sine is negative cosine of u times 1 fourth and then plus c. So this is negative 1 fourth cosine of 4x and plus c. 18, let u be equal to the inside function, which is tangent of x. So du is equal to secant squared x dx. So dx is equal to du over secant squared of x. So I get the antiderivative 3 secant squared of x root u du over secant squared of x. And those cancel out. So this is the antiderivative of 3 u to the 1 half du, so this is 3 u to the 3 halves times 2 thirds, and then plus c. So 2, my u is tangent, so this is tangent of x to the 3 halves, and plus c. Example 19, u is equal to x cubed, du is equal to 3x squared dx, dx is equal to du over 3x squared. So then I get the antiderivative of 2x squared cosine of u du over 3x squared. The x squareds cancel out, so I'm left with the antiderivative of 2 thirds cosine of u du. Antiderivative of cosine is sine, so this is 2 thirds sine of u plus c. So 2 thirds sine of x cubed plus c. Example 20, the higher exponent is in the denominator, so u is equal to x to the fourth minus 1, so du is equal to 4x cubed dx, so dx is du over 4x cubed. So I get x cubed over u times du over 4x cubed, and the x cubes go away. So the antiderivative of 1 fourth, 1 over u, du. So this is 1 fourth ln absolute value of u plus c. So 1 fourth ln absolute value of x to the fourth minus 1, and then plus c. Twenty-one, let u be equal to your cosine of x plus 1. So du is equal to negative sine of x dx. So dx is equal to du over negative sine of x. So this is the antiderivative of sine of x over u, du over negative sine of x. Those cancel out. So I am left with negative absolute value ln of u plus c, so this is negative ln absolute value of cosine of x plus 1, and then plus c. 22, uh, let u be equal to the ln of x, so du is equal to 1 over x dx, so dx is equal to x du. So I get the antiderivative u over 3x times x du. X's go away, so I'm left with the antiderivative of 1 third u du. 1 third u squared times 1 half plus c, so 1 sixth u squared plus c. So 1 sixth. ln of x squared and plus c. 
Let u be equal to 2x minus 5, so du is equal to 2dx, so dx is equal to du over 2. So this is e to the u, du over 2. Take the antiderivative. So this is 1 half e to the u plus c. So 1 half e to the 2x minus 5 and plus c. And then u is equal to e to the x plus 1. So du is equal to e to the x dx. So dx is equal to du over e to the x. So e to the x over u times du over e to the x, and those cancel out. So I'm left with 1 over u du, land absolute value of u plus c, so land absolute value of e to the x plus 1, and then plus c. 25, almost done, all the way to 27. U is equal to 3x squared, du is equal to 6x dx, dx is equal to du over 6x, so antiderivative x e to the u du over 6x, your x's cancel out, so you're left with the antiderivative 1 sixth e to the u du, so 1 sixth e to the 3x squared, and then plus c. So we'll do the u substitution first, so u is equal to 2x, so du is equal to 2dx, so dx is du over 2. So I have the antiderivative of 5 to the u, du over 2. So we're going to leave that 1 half on the outside, so we'll just deal with the 5 to the u part. So 5 to the u, the antiderivative of 5 to the u, 5 to the u over ln of 5. And then this is multiplied by a half and then plus c. So this is 1 half phi, the u power is 2x, divided by the ln of 5, and then plus c. So this is 5 to the 2x times 2, ln of 5, plus c. Last one, u is equal to x to the fourth, du is equal to 4x cubed dx, so dx is du over 4x cubed, so this is the antiderivative of x cubed, 5 to the u, du over 4x cubed, x cubes go away, antiderivative of 1 fourth, not e, 5 to the u, du, antiderivative of 5 to the u is 5 to the u over lambda 5, times 1 fourth, and then plus c, so this is 5 to the x to the fourth, and then for land of five in the denominator, and then plus C. Okay, and that is it for this lesson.